Let's welcome Kathy Holly and Spotlight. Hi, everybody. Why, suddenly I thought I was in Europe with that background music. That's just great. But we are here in Pacifica, and welcome to Spotlight. Happy New Year, everyone. What, what year is this? 2018? I can't believe 2017 flew. And today on the show, I have two wonderful musicians, Jack Prendergast, wonderful bass player, and over here on my left, Tom Lander, a wonderful guitarist. Well, we've got so much to talk about. I mean, in this profession, so much happens and can happen. Jack, I'm going to ask you first, where were you from? Where are you from? I was born in New York, and I was actually raised on Long Island, the suburbs of New York, and uh, went to high school there until I left for college. Now, when did you start music? When did you get interested? I started when I was about nine years old. We had an accordion and a piano in the home, and I played on those. And then in school, they had bands and... I was just so interested in music that I took up the tuba, the saxophone, drums, whatever, oboe, whatever they let me play, I'd play. And so I, um, I just was immersed in it. And you went with it, that's for sure. I did. And I mean, that's great that you had an accordion at home and a piano. So who was musical in your family? Well, my father was from Ireland and he played the spoons. The bones, sometimes <laughs> called the bones. The spoons. Yeah, he was we can, great. I think we could all learn how to play the spoons. <laughs> I love the spoons. So you just got your start. You have the gene. That's part of it, I, I think. Do. Don't you think you're born with, you love, you know, you want to learn about more music. So that's that's really interesting. And you have an interesting story. I understand what happened in college. You went, you know, graduated then from high school and you were playing instruments in high school. And well, then what I was happened? I very involved in jazz, and um, they used to have these jazz festivals, and I was selected uh, to join a group for the, from the State Department to travel all over Europe, including Eastern Europe, behind the Iron Curtain at that time, places that no one got to go. Oh. And it was a 20-piece band, and there were small groups that broke down out of it, and I was actually playing tuba in that, and got to see the world at a very young age. Uh, I was 19 years old. And, 19, uh, so at 19. Was, uh, behind the Iron Curtain, it was very fascinating. Well, and, tell uh, us something about that. What do, I mean, that must have been well, frightening we had a State in, Department in a way. liaison, and he kept reminding us to not pick up with any women who were trying to be interested in us because they might be spies. Oh. In Russia, in the country. <laughs> so I mean, that was, you're 19 years old. Let's face it, it's an interesting um, dilemma to have. But, you know, I went by the rules and uh, right. made my way through Prague, Czechoslovakia, Romania, Bucharest, and uh, What Belgrade. an interesting yeah. time. And did you hear any gunshots or any I actually what, was in Prague during the time of the Russian occupation of Prague. I, you may have seen it depicted in the movie Unbearable Lightness of Being, but no, it's, um, uh, it was the Prague Spring, and then I was there a few months after that, and there were Russian troops and tanks all over the place, and it was... Oh. Uh, it's quite an eye opener. It would have been an eye opener yeah. and frightening. But they took all of you over to these countries anyway to, to share music. To share music and uh, was, common was denominator, a, everybody out there. I mean, even during wartime. It was the beginning of a thaw of the Cold War. It was the very beginning. Uh -huh. and, uh, it was a, actually the first cultural exchange with these Eastern European countries. Well, that's quite something. It you was. were part of it. I was. That is really interesting. And I understand you weren't majoring in music. At that Not time, initially. I was a math and engineering major. Oh, see, well, math, they always say left brain, right brain. So your left brain was working in, in music, of course. <laughs> and I mean, they, they always say if you study music, you know, you're going to be good in math. I don't know. Somehow it didn't work with me. But, <laughs> or maybe it's the reverse. I don't know. But so from there, you went to Prague and you have this wonderful experience. Let's take a look at a video clip you have of I, you. This I found wonderful. this on YouTube. Actually, it was a TV show that was done in Prague in 1968. 1968. There you are in the band. And what are you playing? I'm playing tuba. Tuba. Thank you. 
Wow, that is great. Do you still play the tuba a little bit? No, I don't, um, but I sometimes think about getting one. I play once every four years. Uh, I go back to Notre Dame where I went to college, and there's a marching band reunion, and I go, and they assign me a tuba, and I play along with the alumni marching band. Oh, that Every is four great. Years. Every four years. Now you're going to do, is this the fourth year? I, actually, coming up this year, 2018, I'll be going there in October. Great. And so you'll be playing the tuba I again. I will be playing the tuba. It would be fun to see a photo <laughs> or a video of that, you know, versus this one. But it, that is, the piano player was pretty good, too. That's Larry Dwyer. He's a tremendous player. And he's still around playing? He's actually the director of music at University of Notre Dame right now in the jazz department. Oh, you'll have to say how much we enjoyed the video, right? I will, I will. <laughs> Please, tell him. And this, I mean, I love that kind of music. Oh, I do too. That, let's, we really, we call it uh, trad jazz. Trad jazz, you know, Dixieland. For those Land, out there, you know. Traditional you have to, jazz. Yeah, Dixieland. Yeah. I mean, it's great. It's so happy. I love it, the energy from it. So after that, after those days... What happened after you graduated, or did you go into music in college eventually? Well, I played music through college, put my, my way through college, you know, made my way playing music, and uh, decided to pursue a career in music. And uh, electric bass was my main instrument because I realized that that was mm-hmm. the future of the low end of instruments. Um, and I love to play rock, I love to play jazz. And uh, I was making a living as an electric bass player, and I, because I could read music and I was trained, I I was able to get a lot of shows uh, where yeah. you know name Tell us artists. Tell about that. No, name oh, artists. I with Some a lot of, of people like Buddy Greco, Jerry Lewis, uh, oh. Phyllis Diller, Sid Charisse, and Tony Martin. You know, singers who would come through, and John Davidson. People who were had shows, right. and there would be an orchestra that backed them up, and they'd be in for two weeks with their musical director, and then they'd leave. I worked with Jerry Lewis, who passed away last year yes, for two right. weeks. He was an interesting right. guy, and. So um, t- tell me, you know, about one of the people that well, you remember. You know, Phyllis you Diller right here. Of. She she was a very, very sweet person. Phyllis she, um, Diller. She gave me this uh, photograph. Jack, you what? <laughs> and uh, yeah, what she was just mean? so, she was so nice. A lot of the performers, you know, the band was uh, basically someone to, you know, um, use for a few hours and then uh-huh. leave. But Phyllis was very friendly. And I remember downtown in the town we were playing in Ev- Evansville, Indiana on this night. I uh, was out of the town and I heard her voice going, Jack, Jack. And I looked over, I couldn't see her. And she was in disguise. She was oh. dressed as a little old lady, what you might call like a bag lady. And she and, had to be probably. Because I guess ways. she didn't want people bothering her. It was, it was hilarious. She was a very sweet person. How wonderful. And so was this when she was at the top of her career, which is oh, yeah. just yeah, yeah, this is we're talking the seventies, you know, when, oh, she was great. She yeah, was quite she funny. was very good, and she was a pioneer. And what other artists do you remember, you know, being friendly? And I mean, I've always wondered when you work with great people, they say, you know, sometimes the bigger they are, the nicer they are. And well, and that's, you know, you Don know, Rickles is a guy I worked with who was absolutely the sweetest man you could ever imagine. And he could always insult everybody. He had the, the oh, caustic, insulting great. persona on stage, but um, backstage, he couldn't have been nicer. Oh, His wife great. was with him. He was quiet. He was soft-spoken. He was gracious. And that means a lot. You remember that because mm-hmm. that's not always the case, as you know. Yes, you know? that's right. That's right. <laughs> Sometimes it's that's quite right. the opposite. And you know what's so interesting about comedians in particular? It seems that sometimes they can be very quiet. Right. And you, don't, you, know, you wonder where are they getting these wonderful you know, one-liners from. And they're, they're in their head for sure. <laughs> exactly. You know? I mean, Don was one of my favorite ones. And uh, you, so you've worked with all different styles of music. Absolutely. All different I, genres. I loved all genres. I loved jazz. I loved rock. Actually, in the 70s, when I went to San Francisco, I wanted to 
you know, be part of the San Francisco rock oh, scene because yes. I love that right. music. Right. And, you know, as a young man, I just had no problem knocking on the doors of the people who were in it and say, I'm interested in being part of this. And when, when I, were one of those doors. I was able to actually I lived in Bolinas, California, oh, and the Jefferson Airplane place. had a house out there. Oh, and I started goodness. hanging out with them. And their drummer at the time was a guy by the name of Joey Covington. Sure. And uh, they were so prominent in the business at that time. They had their own label, Grunt Records. Do you have a picture a, of the band? By I have the way, a picture that, of because uh, you worked with. Um, with Joey there. Here's Joey, here's Joey who oh my gosh, was their drummer. And this was his solo album. And um, that's me with hair and beard, somewhat unrecognizable. Yeah, I, <laughs> Another it, look, It look, was a Jack. different time. It was a different time. And um, so I was fortunate enough to be part of his band for his solo album called Fat Fandango and had an enjoyable time yeah. doing that. And um, You co-wrote a song, I understand. I co-wrote a song on it called Your Heart Is My Heart. That was the title tune. Um, this is the cover of, this of the album. This is the cover Gorgeous. painted by a pretty well-known artist named Jose Montañez. A theme of the album is, is nature and water, and you see a little fish running through here oh, in the gorgeous. cover. Well, we have to listen to your song that you co-wrote and yeah. keep that album up. It's beautiful. I love yeah. that painting. And so you wrote a song, and the title of it again. Co-wrote it with the other members of the band called Your Heart Is My Heart. It's I think we a... can listen to a little bit of yeah. it. I hear the clock chime, but I don't know what time it is. Your okay. heart is Tom my heart. That's great. I always love Tom. I've, yeah, I've worked uh, with Tom, too. <laughs> I know. You've worked with yeah, everybody. Worked with Tom. Almost everybody. Yeah. Are there any other, you know, little things, little stories that you might have of being on the road with some of those great people? You stayed in nice hotels. You traveled with them. Oh, it, it's a wonderful life. And, uh, you know, I, I always enjoyed being in all the different parts of the country and seeing all the different audiences. I you know, traveled as Buddy Greco's musical director for a while. And, you know, he's a, he's a fine artist. He's a great piano player, an yes. excellent singer, always had great musicians. And, you know, sometimes we'd play in Las Vegas and you'd have the, the backing of the, the great big bands that were housed in all the big hotels at that time. We played the Sahara and you know, some of the greatest horn players in the world would be in the house bands there because you could make a living. You didn't have to tour. And That's you know, right. These guys were right. union players. Those and, were the days in Las uh, Vegas. It was wonderful. You know, it was wonderful. They, were, to, to they just, were wonderful. I felt like I got to work in, in, a, in a kind of show business that really doesn't exist anymore. No, it's changed a lot. It, it does not exist. And, you know, I understand we're going to also talk about you have another career of sorts that you went into. And just to briefly tell me about that social work right you know I'm at, when I had some children and uh, you know felt like you know I didn't want to travel anymore I wanted a little bit more stability than the music life provided right. I uh, decided to transition to another career when I was a band leader at a big hotel so I went to school to graduate school became a psycholo psychologist psychotherapist yes and um, and, and you ended up in a commercial. Ended up in, and ended up, actually, there was a TV commercial that was um, uh, done about AHA Moment from Mutual of Omaha. Yes. And they uh, kind of did a short segment of that. And maybe you can take a I look at it. I think we've got it. Let's, let's watch it. And this is my AHA Moment. Well, about 30 years ago, I was a professional musician. And I'd been hired for the summer to play at a resort where family visited for a week at a time. And uh, there was a developmentally disabled boy about 10 years old that used to hang out there and um, he used to like to listen to me play the piano. He didn't fit in with the other kids and he just enjoyed the sound of it and I got to know him a little bit. One day he asked me if I knew the song A Little Help From My Friends by the Beatles. Uh, I said I did and he said he knew how to sing it. He asked me if I thought he could be in the talent show. 
And I said, you know, given his age, he'd have to ask his parents. After thinking about it, they reluctantly agreed. So the night of the talent show, he gets up there and he knocks it out of the park. Uh, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. This kid was fantastic. And, uh, you know, I thought about it uh, afterwards and thought, you know, I really enjoyed working with that kid. I made up my mind to pursue studies in psychology and social work at that time and work with people. And I got my master's and I went to, to work in the field of psychology and social work, working with kids. And I often think back to that day with that kid as the real starting point, the aha moment of really teaching me uh, of, of how much joy you can get out of helping somebody else. Great aha moment. Thank you, Jack. That is really terrific. Thank in you. fact, you know, it's great because you, Tom, I'm going to refer now to Tom because, Tom, you are a musician, of course, and I've known you for a long time, and you're a wonderful guitarist, but you also happen to work part-time, I know, teaching right now. We can get into that a little bit later, working with children. And I want to find out, the, where are you from originally? After I'm from all these Wisconsin, years, Wisconsin, southern Wisconsin, small town. The cheese heads. Yes, the, the cheese, cheese heads. <laughs> and then, what happened in music? Did you get into music when you were in school? My mother gave me her clarinet when I was in fourth grade, and I started on that. And then in high school, I listened to the radio and I got excited about uh, the the rock songs with the tenor sax solos. So I got a tenor sax and I learned solos from the record, and I got into a band in high school and we played some events. And uh, uh, when I was in college, uh, I heard the Beatles and I said I want to do that. So I, I got a guitar and started doing that at age 19. It's similar so, to Jack. Yeah, similar uh, to at, uh, the, within about six months of getting the guitar, I was earning enough money to uh, put myself through college, and my parents didn't have to worry about me anymore. That's, that's <laughs> really great. But we know how it's changed. The music business yeah, has really yeah. changed a lot. But, yeah. I mean, there was a, the ability to make a living. Yes, yeah, That's right. Exactly. You were in that perfect time, and I was too, when you could tour. But did you do some touring then? Because you ended up in California, right? Uh, um, I did a, a little bit of touring. Went to Montana and r really odd places. Um, Playing with other uh, bands? Well, with yeah, with a few bands that I put together uh, during my college years. Oh, you did. And, All uh, right. So you were we, the band leader, and more or less, yeah. And um, we backed up Del Shannon for a little bit. Oh yeah. And uh, Del Shannon, gosh. I went to uh, Canada with uh, backing up the Platters, although <laughs> the Platters it turns out Great to have group. been hundreds of people because the rights to the name got dispersed among various... Yes, uh, there's many various so the, groups, the, the Canadian platters. rights to the platters <laughs> were nobody from the original platters. But uh, anyway, it was interesting and fun. Oh, it would be great. All that music. I mean, that was terrific music. I, I used mm -hmm. to love all love that. Yeah. And, and so then after touring or working with different bands, et cetera, what happened after that when you came to California? How did you get to California? Because that's my point. Were you... I um, move on out. I, I got my degree in college, similar to Jack. I got a psychology degree, and uh, oh. then I went into the School of Art for about a year and a half. And uh, uh, I oh. wasn't sure what to do with my life, so I bought a van and put all my stuff in it and came out to California. You were a hippie. You had a van what to, with your <laughs> uh, what, what I could get into here. And, uh, so. A Volkswagen <clears throat> van. A van? No, no, no. It was no. Okay, Ford it was a van. van. But I understand. <laughs> I'm looking at these paintings behind your chair. You have gorgeous paintings. You Thank are you. an artist, and you went to art school, so musician and art. And I think we have, we can show some of the paintings, and as well as listen to audio mm -hmm. clips of your fast forward to a jazz trio that you now have in San Francisco. Okay. Right, and yes. you and you're playing with. This.
great, great music. And the title of that song? All or, or Nothing, nothing at, all. at All. All right. <laughs> this painting that you're holding, I, of course, we saw it on the screen. This is beautiful. Uh, tell me what it is. It's a uh, scene. It's, but... it's a, an impression of Mission Street in San Francisco. Oh, uh, interesting. Mission Street is, is quite long, and I sort of exaggerated that feeling of going off into infinity. Wait, uh, and then you had another and, one. I don't want you to pull that one up. You can put that one down. But the, whoops, the one that I love, too, is the one with all the autumn colors. Uh-huh. And, the, the, uh, abstract what, the abstract over The abstract. Now, yeah. what is that? What, I mean, what it's, do you think it is? Uh, I, it's pretty much um, created without any specific uh, goal. Uh, just random just colors. creation. And uh, I... I noticed in there something that looked like eyes, so I decided it was called These Eyes. Oh, These Eyes. Which is similar to, a, a, comes from a song that I remember from oh, long these ago. Oh, These Eyes. These yeah, Eyes. These Eyes. Are okay. smiling. <laughs> well, and there's another painting, the other painting that you did you, is an abstract, but you mm -hmm. said it was of a gazelle. Gazelle and lion. That is that. really interesting. And then I see that when the longer I look at it, I see the gazelle. And the lion's head, right? Mm -hmm. That's exactly. fascinating. How did you come up with um, painting? I know you went to art school and all that, but you were playing the guitar and doing great in music. And then what made you decide to change and to, well, I, you don't sell paintings or do you? I do. Yes. So it, on your website, people can go um, to your website and you can sell them? Mostly through um, putting them in cafes and uh, hotels and um, where, wherever I can find uh, a place that's willing to show my paintings. And then it's great because you can go in and, and say, I'll play the guitar at the exactly. same time. Exactly, I'll play at my opening <laughs> play the and give you free music. <laughs> that's, no, that's great. And so you did eventually get to California and you met Nina, your wife, and I, she's an artist. Uh, that's right. Wonderful artist. Yeah, she's, she's a sculptor. She is, uh, she's very talented. Tom. And so fast forward, you were playing the guitar and you ended up coming to California and just freelancing? Yes, just, just freelancing. With different and various um, groups. Uh, right. Of course, we've worked together right. in the years past. Yes. Oh my gosh, we did. Yes, yes definitely. Right. And now you have a jazz trio and you work in a French restaurant. I saw you one night. It was wonderful. Uh, yes. Thank you for coming in. That was uh, And the Chez, name of the restaurant? Chez Marius on 24th Street in San Francisco. That's one of the few places. And what, what is impressive about it is your jazz trio is soft enough that I can, you know, we can eat and we can chat a little bit. And, it, it, and you even have a horn player. Yes. It's amazing. Yes, and it was so subdued to, uh, and wonderful yeah. background. And I have to t compliment Jack because, Jack, you have the same situation. You have a trio, jazz trio. And I know I was over there listening to you last night. It's just wonderful. At um, Panama Hotel, the Panama Hotel, everybody in San Rafael. It is just a great place. I know you're on the schedule once a month for sure. At least, hopefully, in the next the second Tuesday of the month. Second Tuesday of the month. All right, okay. that's important to remember for people, because it was soft enough that we could still talk, and it was wonderful music, and it's just great to have a restaurant where you can go, and listen to good music, and still chat. Mm -hmm. That doesn't bother you, does it? We're all talking? No. Not a bit. I like it. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> We've worked in those situations, everybody out there. So you have to understand musicians are work, you know, we're used to this. As a performer, singer, sometimes, you know, I have been, I think we've all had this experience where it can be overwhelming, the noise. Mm -hmm. But as a vocalist, I know that it's, uh, I've done it all and I don't get upset. Don't listen. Okay. That's all right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but at least we're getting the music out there, and that's really important. So now, Tom, you teach too on the side. Um, You're subbing, I, is that right? Well, in the public I was schools? A, a teacher at Community Music Center for 12 years in San Francisco, teaching guitar and bands. Uh -huh. And then I got into the public school system, and I taught a couple of years uh, high school uh, art and middle school art and music. And Great. then I became a substitute teacher after that because I found that full-time teaching didn't allow me enough time to do the 
the other things that I like to do. So I'm still substitute teaching. And I understand sometimes you teach math. Right? Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, you know, before... Before the show ends, if um, there's some way of getting that audio from YouTube of Jack's song that you co-authored, that would be great. Maybe we can go out with that if uh, those in the room find it, because that, that really was, um, it was terrific. I loved hearing you co-wrote a song. And as a writer, I don't know what, how people get these, you know, ideas to write their songs. I think I've written two in my life. Do you still write? I do write, and I actually have a song that's going to be coming out next year on a little CD with a band that I was in many years ago. We're doing a, a second CD, and uh, I find when I write, I think I'm writing something that um, is coming out of just nowhere, and then I realize it's always about me, even though I don't think it is initially. Oh, which, really? Which what, can, so what is the name of the band? Well, this was this is First Friday, and uh, it's a oh. very good band I had many years ago. And uh, What style? Uh, it's rock and roll. Rock and roll, yeah. great. But um, this song is called Lucky, and it's just about being lucky because I feel like I've had a very lucky life, you know, that yes. so many times in my life uh, I feel like luck has played a major factor in uh, things going well for me. Yeah, and well, so, they have mm-hmm. gone well, I think. Yeah. Well, You've done really well, you know. Well, you know, I, as I say, it, it, sometimes it seems like luck plays a big part in it. They used to say that about showbiz, you know, that yeah. it's uh, that it's ninety percent who you know and luck, and ten percent talent. But I don't know about that. I don't think that's true. <laughs> but you know, whatever whatever they say. But it's just great to have two of you here because you're still working. That's the really important mm-hmm. thing. You know, we keep our passion going. We keep it going, and we're giving it to you out there in the public. So. Take a look before um, before you know it. Music, live music, is you know very minimal these days. So please go out and support restaurants and everywhere they have live music. And I want to thank everybody for tuning into Spotlight because without you, I wouldn't have a show. And I want to thank PCT and all the crew and and everybody back there working so hard. So we'll have to see you. In a month, I guess, and I'm trying to think. I have new guests coming. I know they're going to be musicians, singers. You never know. So please don't forget to tell everybody about the show Spotlight, and you can watch it on YouTube, actually, because that's very important. So Happy New Year, everyone. I will see you next month. But I don't know what time it is. My heart's close to you